And I want to share some thoughts about what we can do in this hour. And the first one, and I love God speaking prophetically. There is, I believe again, that there is just an avalanche of God's voice that's speaking through you and me. God, God has been speaking to me more this year. And going all the way back to last March, I believe what God is speaking to me in various ways. I've spoken out of Second Chronicle or Second Kings seven and Second Kings six in the book of Esther. And there's a real theme of what God is saying to me that He has a mercy on this land, which is farther than what I think His mercy ought to be. If He were to ask me, I'd say, Lord, Your mercy is greater than I can understand. But I'm so grateful. And I believe that there is a path, that there is a window for us to see a movement of God in our day that's beyond, maybe it's the sort of thing we've read about in books. You know, I'm sure all of us wonder, what was it like to be in Jonathan Edwards' day? Well, maybe we can find out. I, I believe we're living in a day where we are, if we will seek the Lord with all our heart, and I believe that there is millions of believers in this country who are crying out after the Lord. I believe that there's millions of believers in the Iranian church, in the Chinese church, and in churches all over the world. I believe God is going to usher in a breakthrough of His Spirit. And we'll be able to see that. And we want to avail ourselves of this window of grace that I believe God has in front of us. And I know that we are and we will, and we will see the Lord move in this day. And we know that there's just a, an avalanche of people who are hearing from God. And, you know, I encourage all of us, we, we, we know that prophecy is given for edification, comfort, and encouragement. Thank God he, he speaks. And just because, I think we all know this, just because somebody says, here's what God told me, what do we do? Well, we will take that, we will weigh it against the Word, we will weigh it as what is the Lord is witnessing in our heart. But thank God that there is authentic prophecy, and there is a avalanche of prophetic voices that are speaking and i hope some of the pre i hope that there's you know for every person in this room i hope that the lord is speaking to you personally speaking to you about where the path is for because that's the most important prophetic voices to hear is what is god is speaking to me and we can take and we can share what god we can encourage each other with what god is speaking to others with people who you know hear hear the hear the lord clearly and and are submitted to him and so I thank God for his, we're supposed to despise not prophesying. I love prophecy. Oh, thank God. It's so sweet when we hear from the Lord. Here's a familiar verse, uh, here, familiar ver verse Amos 3, 7. Surely the Lord God does nothing except he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. I thank God that God is speaking in this hour. You know, here, here's another. We could go through dozens and dozens of times when God spoke Everything changed. God spoke. The Lord may have given the people one small thing to do. You remember the axe head went in the water and the Lord told Elisha. I can't remember if it's Elijah or Elisha. I forget. I think it was Shah. Okay, Shah. He said, here's the word of the Lord. Speak to that axe head. He spoke the axe head. What did the axe head do? Now, Elisha could say, well, I'm not doing anything. If, uh, what was Elisha's part? To reach down in the water and pick it up. Again, God gives us a, a portion. So when God speaks, we will do, He will do what we cannot do, and He gives us the privilege to do what? What we can do, He tells us to pick up the axe head. Let's pick up the axe head. So God speaks, and He speaks through His prophets. I, I love this out of Second Chronicles chapter 20. You know, just think about this. We know this verse. Believe, can we say this together? To believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Now, I had, I had got reminded of this, the context of this verse. Oh, wow, that sounds pretty good. Let's believe his prophets and we will prosper. This verse, this inspiration, this truth that was given Jehoshaphat was not given Jehoshaphat when he was sitting in his palace overlooking the tranquil fields of his kingdom at a time in perfect peace. When was this prophecy given? It says, it is, we need to hear what God is speaking prophetically. 
When was this promise given? Second Chronicles chapter 20. Hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, that's when there was not one, but three armies come against Jehoshaphat, and he has to say, Lord, we don't have what it takes to fight this army, and we don't know what to do, but, don't you, know, don't you love the buts of Scripture? Fill in the blank with me. But our eyes are on you. And God gave a prophetic word. That they were going to go worship. They were going to worship first. They were going to worship first. Did I, did I have I mentioned so far? They were going to worship first. And then God moved. But that's the context of this verse, is we want to believe the prophets and prosper. And this promise was given in a desperate hour. We're in a pretty desperate hour right now. And we are grateful for what God is speaking to you, to me. So that's the first thing. How do we respond to perilous times when there's a, you know, when the waters are a little turbulent, you know? The first thing you do, we, we know God is speaking. We will listen to what He says, and we will do it. But let me tell you the other side. Here's another way. Is uh, we are going to, there's many, many times, just think about this in Scripture, and I love the prophetic word. Everything that's been done in this church that's of, of major note was because God said. We're in this, bu we're in this building because God said. We, have, we own that property up on the hill because God said. This church was started because God said. We love the word of the Lord. We cherish the fact that God speaks. We're told somewhere in Deuteronomy, I forget the verse right now, that the greatest miracle is that God speaks to people just like us. Thank God he does. But also, here's one thing I'm reminded of. There's a lot of times when we need to do what needs to be done and God doesn't speak. Let's think of 1 Samuel 17. When David comes up and he looks at this uncircumcised Philistine that's twice his height, it doesn't say, and the word of the Lord came to David saying, you're going to get this guy. You know what David says? Somebody needs to do something about this. Who are you to defile the armies of the living God? He just did what it was right because it was the right thing to do. There are times when God does not give us a word. We need to see the circumstances and say, I'm going to do this because this is what the situation demands. God has prepared us for a time like this, and we're going to do what needs to be done. So again, I cherish the fact that God speaks. But I know that there's also times when God says, we need to do what needs to be done, and we don't need a word because God has planted in us to recognize what the situation is so we can do it, so we can move forward. Am I, is, this, is this biblical? Sometimes we just need to do what needs to be done. By the way, let me go back to 2 Chronicles 20 for just a second. It says, believe in the prophets and prosper. I think most of us know this. That word prosper has nothing to do with money. I think we understand that. It means to break forward, to push through. I know in this hour, as we seek God, we are going to see breakthroughs. We are going to see resistances, plans, schemes fall. Is this true? This is, we will see, God has given us an amazing opportunity to live in an area, but when I know, in a time, in an era, we will see things fall. By the way, we can cite just a number of examples of where people did things in, in our history just because the circumstances demanded. I, I love hearing about, like after Pearl Harbor, there was all kind of 17-year-olds who signed up. You know, George Her I think I've mentioned this recently, George Herbert W. Bush, whatever his full name was, was I think the youngest pilot that was shot down in the Pacific Theater, I think he was like, he might have been 17 years old. I mean, he, he, he enlisted, you know, he, he, instead of riding the 1-8 where his age, he might have made a 7. So he could get in. Because he knew that the circumstances required that we, we, do, we do something. And there's times 
that we need to move forward again. And God will open up circumstances for us to do that. By the way, just taking this one step for, 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 uh, further, I love that sometimes we need to move forward when we don't have all the information that we need. There's a story about how, and of course, we know after Pearl Harbor, we had, our, we had a challenge in front of us, right? I had forgotten, if you take a look, you know, people did what needed to be done. Let's go. You know, it was only seven months after Pearl Harbor that we won the victory at Midway. Seven months later. And even when they went, they didn't have all the information that they need. You know what? Here's a true story about this. They had intercepted enough codes from the Japanese to think that they might be headed towards Midway. You know what they said? We're going to do what needs to be done. Let's go. I know that there's times when we have a definitive word from God. He's spoken to us. We say, I know that I can do this because God's spoken to me. Let's go. And also believe that there's times when we need to recognize the circumstances and do it because it needs to be done. Here's another example of that. And we talked about David recently. He just did what needed to be done. There's no, there's no prophecy given to David to go take down Goliath. Here's another one. I love this. Here's, this is where Jonathan and his armor bearer, they're seeing there's two guys. And they're look, what are they looking down on? The army of the Philistines. And what does, Josh, what does Jonathan say? Jonathan said to his, uh, the young man, his armor bearer next to her, says, come, let's go over and let's take care of these uncircumcised Philippines, uh, Philistines. Philippines. <laughs> Them too, Lord. And it doesn't say, and Jonathan did this because he heard the voice of the Lord saying, this is my battle plan. Look at what the next thing he says. It may be. It may be that the Lord will work for us. Something needs to be done. It may be that the Lord will work for us because nothing restrains that the Lord can save by many or by few. If we take a look at verse 7, you know what the armor bearer said? Let's go. If you think the Lord may be with us, I'm with you. Let's go do this. And so the two guys routed the whole army. Because they did what needed to be done when they saw their opportunities that were going forward. This is what we're going to do. Now, I want to share along these lines, again, number one, we thank God for His prophetic voice. We want to hear what He is speaking to us. But we also know that there's times that He will give us the recognition of circumstances that need us to move, and we're going to move because we know it needs to be done. We're not going to be presumptuous, but there's times when we just need to recognize what needs to be done and we're going to move forward. And we'll talk some, some obvious things about how we do that. But I want to share some thoughts here. They're out of the book of Esther. Now, I, I love this book because I think there's a template for national deliverance. This, this book is all about a nation that was completely, totally saved from entire annihilation. The plan in the book of Esther was to take out their leader, to take out all of his followers, and to take all their stuff. This is a picture of national deliverance. And what happened? God delivered an entire nation. Because God is sovereign over your life and mine, your family and mine, and God is sovereign over nations. And I want to do a complete systematic theological review of every prophecy in the book of Esther. Pretty good, huh? There's not a single prophecy in that book. You know why? Because the people in this book saw what needed to be done, and they did it. Am I, am, I, am I making the two sides of the I'm trying to make the two sides of the coin plain enough that even I can get it. Thank God for His voice. God, open up our ears more than ever to be able to hear Your voice. Also, give us discernment of situations that require, that just give us the opportunity to move forward for You, whether You speak that way or not. And so, I, I love what, here's what, uh, here's what Esther says. Uh, she says, I will go to the king, which is against the law, 
And it doesn't say, and the prophet came to Esther saying, what did she say? This is what I'm going to do. And if I perish, I go to see Jesus sooner than I'd planned. Now, I'm not saying any, the Lord is putting us in a, any of us in a circumstance where our life is on the line. But I, I know that that's always part of the Christian life. Are we will? I mean, if, you know, God may put, for whatever reasons, he may, he may at some point put us in circumstances like that. But I, I know that there's people in this country right now who have, who have taken some things to stand up at great risk. And that is part of the Christian life. You know? I mean, again, maybe our best risk is, oh, I'm, I'm really scared to talk about my neighbor. I know they're here. Need to be. God help us move into the situations that he has in front of us. By the way, it's not all that, it's not all that scary. I mean, our ability to reach out is not all that scary. I mean, we have, you know, Chris, let me just give a quick example. Christmas caroling is kind of a lost thing in our culture. I haven't been Christmas caroling in 30 years. And we went Christmas caroling in, uh, in Stephanie and, uh, neighborhood with all the kids and it was a blast and there was almost every place we went that these people opened up the doors and we we gave them the gospel oh come all ye it, we, we sang the gospel and in almost every case you know what they you, know, you could just feel this connection going on so god wants us to be reaching out because there's people out there who know that they they know that they're a mess they know that there is a huge void, and they're looking for somebody. You know who it is? Jesus, and probably through people just like us. So that's what Esther did. She made a decision. In this case, it was at the risk of her life. You know, are we willing to take a risk that, you know, the, I mean, we did have one, one neighbor who basically said, no, I mean, almost everybody except that would get lovingly, embraced what we were doing you know there was one lady who said hey i might i might even come and sing with y'all can i join you any other you know, there's there was one particular man who opened up the door and and basically no that's all right i mean if there's there's some risk large or small to any step we take for the jeep for the for the lord right how many of us are ready to take the next step with jesus we are god is putting us he's putting us he's giving us opportunities every day so that's the that's the next thing that I see is we, the first thing again is we do what God tells us to and we, we hunger for the voice of the Lord. We believe He's going to speak to us and we'll recognize circumstances where the circumstances themselves dictate move, move forward. And so we, we will do that. Now one of the things that we can do without a voice of the word is we, we will, without God speaking to us, is we can pray. I want to encourage each one of us, Knox, I'm talking to you too, we will stand and pray in this hour as long as it takes. And I'm praying right now that God will even increase the depth and the stamina and the steadfastness of all of our prayer in Jesus' name. Would you, I'm a, would you like to receive that? God, let us be persevere in prayer beyond what we thought we were capable of doing. God, strengthen us in this hour. And Father, we thank you that you are giving us the ability to pray and pray and pray until we see breakthroughs. And we all said in Jesus' name. Amen. So we pray and we will, we will fast. So here's, here's one of the things that they did without there being a, a prophetic word. It says, Esther put out the word. It says, I want everybody to fast for three days. You know, fasting Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Just encourage everybody who can in some fashion. It says here they didn't eat or drink for three days. I'm not suggesting you do that. That's... Uh, but I would just encourage you somehow in between you and the Lord, you figure out a way to fast because fasting empowers our prayers. You know, Jesus, the one who said, when you fast and it will enhance our prayers. And so I just encourage each one of us to find because it's the right thing to do. You know, I mean, I've had the Lord nudge me and say, I think you ought to fast. But here's one of those times. And so the situation Lord, fortify our prayers. And we know how many times they fasted in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Did God move? Yes. They fasted here in Esther, Esther and God, God moved. So, the, again, we see we want to hear what God says. Also, we want to move when, and do it. We want to 
move when God doesn't speak. We want to we want to do those things that we know to do, like fasting and prayer. And also, when we get a portion of what needs to be done, we want to be faithful to do it. You know, we may say, well, you know, I, I'm not I'm not a head of state. I'm not I'm not an Esther. I, I'm not a Mordecai. I'm just me. I want to share a couple minutes talking about a person that I'd never heard about until recently. I have probably read about him a thousand times about a person named Hathak. Y'all know the story of Hathak. But let's share this. Here is what he was somebody who was just a regular guy who was faithful to do what he could do. He's, we find out about him. He's mentioned uh, five times in the book of Esther in, in Esther chapter 4. And here's what he did. You know, Esther is inside the palace and she doesn't know everything that's going on outside. And Mordecai is outside and he's the one who finds out about Haman's plot. Okay? And they need to be able to communicate with each other. So it says that Esther called this guy who was just a, a, he was a servant. And you know what he did? He says, hey, Thak, I want you to take this message to Mordecai. So he takes the message to Mordecai, and Mordecai tells, you know, uh, Hathak tells Mordecai about, you know, gives this message, and then Mordecai responds, and it says, let me just read these verses. When Queen, I'm starting in verse 4, when Queen Esther's maids and eunuchs came and told her about Mordecai and the plot that he'd heard about, she was deeply distressed. Then Esther sent for Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs, who had been appointed to her as her attendant. You know, it says here that Hathak was one of the people. You know what I'm sure, sure uh, Esther did? She said, I could select a number of these people. I want to find somebody who's faithful. Hathak will be faithful to do this, to deliver the message. And you know what? He was. He was faithful to deliver the message. Then Esther sent for Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs, who had been appointed as her attendant. She ordered him to go to Mordecai and find out what was troubling him and why he was in mourning. So Hathak went out to Mordecai in the square in front of the palace gate. And Mordecai told him the whole story. And Mordecai gave Hathak a copy of the dec decree that called for the death of all Jews. And he asked Hathak to take it back to Esther and explain the situation and he also asked him to direct her to go to the king to beg for mercy and plead for the people. So Hathak returned to Esther with Mordecai's message. Without Hathak's message, what would have happened? The whole nation could have perished. But here's this guy who said, somebody's given me a message. All I need to do is get this in the right place. I will be faithful. I'm going to get this message where God wanted me to take it. I believe each one of us has an opportunity to be a Hathak. Say, Lord, here's my role. You know, I will do it. And because he was faithful, and here's this guy none of us have never heard of before. I, I'd never really noticed this guy's name, but he was critical to saving the nation. And it really underscores the part that where we are in our nation, which needs saving, there's a part for you, there's a part for me. And Lord, let us be faithful to do that. So we will do what God says. We will do what needs to be done, and we will do what we know to do, and we will be faithful in it. There's a couple other verses that I want to share and turn this into a prayer, and I believe, here we go, we've talked about the, the power of a prophetic word and the power of moving into situations where you don't have a prophecy. I believe the Lord has given me something else I believe is prophetic out of this book, which is a salvation of an entire nation. Do we believe God can save an entire nation? You know, and here's a comparison out of Esther chapter 3, verse 12. And the context here is, Haman was so obsessed with getting this leader out of office. Hello. 
that when it came to, he went to King Xerxes and says, I want to write this decree to get rid of this guy. And the king said, all right, go write it. Haman didn't just delegate this to somebody else. It said he wrote it personally. The king's scribes were called on the 13th day of the first month, and a decree was written according to all that Haman commanded. You know what? If this had been the end of the story, it would have been a tragedy for Israel. But there was a second decree that was written. Let's go to Esther chapter 8, verse 9. The king's scribes were called again, this time in the third month, on the 23rd day. And this edict was, the words are almost identical, except there's a different name here. The first edict was written according to all that Haman commanded. The second edict on the 23rd day of the third month was written according to all that Mordecai commanded. I believe that there's being a second edict that's being written that will bring protection, that will bring deliverance, that will bring breakthrough. This nation has never been perfect. It never will be. But this is a nation, by and large, it's been established on a Christian, Judeo-Christian biblical basis. And I believe that we will see our God move in power to protect this nation. And let me just give one other thing. Again, I, uh, I, think, I've, I think my love for the prophetic word, your love from hearing the voice of God is clear. I think also that we can see many times in Scripture we just need to do what needs to be done because that's what needs to be done. And God, let me do it. Thank you for giving me the privilege. Just do what needs to be done. But I'm giving what I believe is another prophetic word that I believe that the Lord has getting, given to me that the second edict is, is being written. And we will see God's protection and deliverance. But let me just bring underscore something about what I believe here is a prophetic word. The day that on the 23rd day of the third month when Mordecai writes out this command, nothing changed that day. And every, pe every person who was part of the first edict didn't know about it yet. Amen? This edict, there was 127 provinces in King Xerxes and it says, this message had been sent out by swift horses, specifically bred to bring messages. And that message had gone out to all 127 provinces. And here, so on the 22nd day of that month, the first edict was still in force. And there's a piece of paper that's written in private somewhere on the 23rd, and everything changed. But they didn't know it yet. But God did. And God delivered the nation. Now, where I'm headed with all of this, and we're going to turn this into a prayer. If God speaks to us, we're empowered to do what He says. If God just gives us a recognition to move forward in circumstances, we will be empowered to do what needs to be done. In the meantime, we will pray and fast because we know it's the right thing to do. And Lord, let us be like this servant who just took the message. And that was vital to connecting the dots. We can all take the message. Amen. We can all. And here is kind of the culmination of this, which is where we are and what we want to pray. I believe that we will see certain things happen in ways that maybe we have no idea how they're going to break forward. Chances are when God breaks through, it'll be in ways we didn't really think, oh, that's not the way I thought God was going to do it. But I believe that it is imperative that we see that the grace that God has given us is so that we can be the church. 
You know, if we see some kind of breakthrough that's in political realms, I pray that we recognize that is only a part, maybe even a small part. I mean, it may be like Hathak. It's important. But God is, I believe God in this country is given the church of Jesus Christ another opportunity for us to be the church. And that He is empowering us to be the people who will talk to our coworkers, talk to our neighbors, you know, pray for people who need salvation. Their, their, their nephew is on drugs. And I pray that we have a vision to be God's church and to do, to do what God says and to move forward when God hasn't said it and we know it's the right thing to do. And I believe God is empowering us. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. How many of us would like to be empowered to be more like Jesus? To let His love and power change our lives so we can be a better answer for other people. Here's, I, I would like us to, I'd like to read this one last verse and I would like us to pray together. But here is a verse that I also believe as I've been seeking God and say, Lord, what are you, what are you saying in the midst of these huge challenges? But as I've been speaking, or I've been seeking God and say, Lord, anything you want to speak to me, I want to hear what your voice is saying. And here's another thing, another verse that I believe God has resonated in me as a word for us in this hour, where we live and breathe here, here in Texas in the United States. Lord, the time has come for you to break through. God, the Lord, the time has come for you to break through. I believe we will see breakthrough. 